everyone, and welcome to the Oshkosh Common Council August 24th meeting. Please call the roll. Lugerauer? Here. Hansen? Here. Miller? Here. Wojciechowski? Here. Erickson? Here. Ford? Here. Palmieri? Here. Present, seven. Councilmember Mugrauer will lead us in the invocation, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you, Mayor. We come together this evening to discuss the issues that confront our city. May we always seek the wisdom to do things that reflect our concern for the people whom we represent. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, All right, this evening we have a presentation by Greater Oshkosh Healthy Neighborhoods Incorporated Mid-Year Report. Thank you. I'm going to take that off, sorry. Thank you, Council. Thank you, City Manager. And welcome, Kelly Nyforth, uh, as Community Development Director. My name is Pamela Ruder. I am the Executive Director of Oshkosh Healthy Neighborhoods. We've got a slide presentation. You've been given a uh, mid-year report in writing as well. Can you go one more click? We'll get, uh, there we are. Uh, I am the Executive Director of Oshkosh Healthy Neighborhoods and there is some information going out there so we will address it right away. I am retiring as of October 31st. Yay for me. And really, really good news for Oshkosh Healthy Neighborhoods is we have a replacement for our ex executive director position. Uh, longtime board member Tom Fodick will be taking over as executive director. So I feel really good the organization is going to be in great hands and that uh, we're going to continue to do great things here in Oshkosh. So uh, our mid year report, we can go. To Go to the next step, slide. Uh, we work, do work with the Board of Directors as a 501c3. They are uh, very involved, uh, definitely a working board on different committees. They help to develop new partnerships as we look to strengthen Oshkosh neighborhoods. We presently have 19 recognized neighborhood associations. We, Oshkosh does it very different as far as empowering those residents to be leaders. They are the ones that come to us help and ask for help to have that neighborhood association developed. We meet with leaders in the neighborhood associations on a monthly basis with a uh, alliance meeting. This gives them a, a forum to exchange ideas and really uh, focus on what they want to do in their neighborhood association. Cora Strand is our neighborhood coordinator. She works with core teams on their community building and engagement needs. It is again a process very unique to each neighborhood association. Really good news, there's a couple new neighborhoods hoping to develop yet this fall. Just north of Congress Field has an upcoming meeting. Um, another one downtown and then now uh, we're working with a group on 6th and Michigan Avenue to uh, hopefully organize yet this year. Next slide. Our community outreach coordinator is Steph Carlin. She has helped bridge the communication gap during the social distancing of the pandemic. We've uh, developed this Hey Neighbor publication. It's published monthly. It's uh, designed to help our neighborhoods stay informed. We also initiated Feeling Good in the Neighborhood, a monthly live stream showcasing one of our neighborhood associations. We've grown our social media platform uh, immensely on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. Please follow or like us if you have, haven't seen us yet. And we are always updating our website. Next slide, please. One of our partnerships that has blossomed is this Connect Through Tech program that we collaborate with the Oshkosh Senior Center to keep older adults connected and out of isolation. This could not have come at a better time. It has been extremely well received with over 250 participants already. We're constantly evolving that program. They're looking at how to use or offer different classes such as how to use QR codes and there are many, many success stories to share. Next slide, please. 
Another partnership that we are engaged with is Rock the Block Oshkosh. This is our neighborhood revitalization partnership with Habitat for Humanity, uh, obviously us, Oshkosh Healthy Neighborhoods, and the city of Oshkosh brought this unique program. It's a Rock the Block Oshkosh. Uh, we went to our third neighborhood association in 2021 in June. We were at the River East neighborhood and uh, we had 98 volunteers working on different days on 83 different projects. There were 21 properties that uh, had signed up and submitted that application and recorded over 400 volunteer hours. Copper Hall in River East was a wonderful host and a home base for us. We sent people out to do a wide variety of curb appeal projects such as power washing, edging, and various lands landscaping. Next slide, please. These partnerships uh, are very instrumental to our, our work within our neighborhood associations. Uh, Stephen Wiley and Brendan Nielsen from the City Planning D Division have uh, compiled the score sheet. We'll be reporting back on those results, but very uh, hopeful and optimistic that we'll have similar results that we saw in Sacred Heart back in uh, 2019. So we're pleased to coordinate also with the um, Rock the Block Oshkosh, the Born Learning Trail Revival. It's in Rowe Park, which is right next to the downtown Y. Amcor was a financial partner for us on that, and they sent volunteers. Park, we worked with the Parks Department, installed the new signs, and also then uh, they helped prepare the trail for painting. We're a public-private uh, entity. We recognize the value of that engagement in our community. We record the volunteer hours. We track them and we have a total dollar value. Um, my mid-year report offers that as a quarterly number. Uh, I don't think it's in there yet, but our community investment at the end of June was already $60,510 with uh, volunteer hours. Next slide, please. This one's very fun. Uh, we belong to a national organization called NUSA, or Neighborhoods USA. In, uh, February, we submitted a nomination for a Neighborhood of the Year, and we submitted Congress Field Neighborhood Association for the 2020 Rock the Block Oshkosh Neighborhood Revitalization. At the May National Conference, held virtually, it was announced that they received first place in the Multi-Neighborhood uh, Project Partnership Division. Click one more time. After they were the divisional winner, they were also named National Neighborhood of the Year. So they won the grand prize for this partnership that we were able to complete during a pandemic, which uh, uh, we beat out teams from lots of places, but obviously uh, we were very excited to have that national recognition. Next slide, please. Another project we have going, this is with a generous gift from the Oshkosh Area Community Foundation and additional support from the city of Oshkosh. We are offering this three-year program, our Good Neighbor Grant. We will reimburse up to $750 for curb appeal projects in neighborhood associations. Initially, we were funded enough for, to offer 20 grants each of the three years through 2022. We're excited to announce that we received additional funding uh, from the Johnny Kinzel Foundation to, and we can offer additional grants uh, this year and next year. Uh, our grants and foundation dollars that we have raised are at about $55,000 through mid-year. Next uh, slide, please. Block Party Trailer was one that we've been uh, promoting. Pandemic slowed it down just a tad, but we had it in Fourth of July parade at the Farmer's Market. We were out during National Night Out, so many of you there as well. Uh, and we have a couple of neighborhoods that have submitted a reservation. Our goal is to make it easy to have neighborhood block parties where neighbors can get to know neighbors. Next slide. We've been out in the community doing uh, community presentations, whether it's virtual or in person, going to the farmer's market, we continue to inform people and make them aware Oshkosh Healthy Neighborhoods is here to help 
strengthen their neighborhoods. Uh, we've seen tremendous growth uh, and interest in our, in our events. One more click. We were ecstatic with the uh, June Rock the Block Oshkosh, July Neighborhood Night at the Leach. As always, the, second, or the first Tuesday in August is National Neighborhood Night Out. And in September, we'll be recognizing National Good Neighbor Day. It's always September 28th. We're going to have a competition to see how many people can be nominated as the best or a good neighbor. So we're look, we'll stay tuned for that. We'll be accepting nominations uh, beginning of September. One more click. Those partnerships are very important to us. We go out and try and again uh, get uh, neighborhood revitalization done in our neighborhoods through different uh, uh, collaborations. Um, we've uh, continued to grow these uh, over the year and hopefully we can get through a pandemic and not uh, uh, have to social distance again, but because uh, uh, we are all about uh, social connectedness, so it has been challenging, but our staff and our board has responded. I will open it up for <clears throat> questions. We look forward uh, to working with Kelly in uh, Mark Lyons in, in the Community Development uh, and Planning Division. We do miss Alan Davis. He was a, a uh, uh, thinker as far as what neighborhoods can be in Oshkosh, and we believe that uh, we've only touched the surface. We continue to grow, but we'll continue to work to strengthen neighborhoods. Any questions? Deputy Mayor. Thank you, Mayor. Actually, I don't want to, to, to glance over it. Um, Congress Field. I know. That's fantastic. <laughs> that should be celebrated. And so, you know, praise doesn't always, you know, um, doesn't always come fast. Um, but to you, the organization, and, and all the way down to, to the whole neighborhood, that's awesome. That that, that, or, that, that part of this community uh, with that partnership um, was able to achieve that. So congrats to you and, and everybody who did that. Thank you very much. Other questions? All right, thank you so much. Thank you. And congrats good luck you. in your next chapter. I'm happy. <laughs> All right, next we have a public hearing, Ordinance 21409. Approve final resolution for partial right-of-way vacation of Wilson Avenue East of Algoma Boulevard. Plan Commission recommends approval. Do we have anyone registered to speak on this item? No, we do not. All right. And a second reading. Approve final resolution for partial right-of-way vacation of Wilson Avenue East of Algoma Boulevard. Second call for comment. And third reading, final reading. Approve final resolution for partial right of way vacation of Wilson Avenue <coughs> east of Algoma Boulevard. Planning Commission recommends approval. Can I have a motion and a second? So moved. Second. Any discussion? All right, seeing none, please call the roll. Mugger Hour? Aye. Hansen? Aye. Miller? Aye. Wojciechowski? Aye. Erickson? Aye. Ford? Aye. Palmieri? Aye. Carried seven. All right, we will move on to citizen statements to council. Citizens are to address council only. Statements are limited to five minutes and must address items that are not listed on the council meeting agenda and are limited to issues that have an impact on the city of Oshkosh and the common council may address at a future meeting must not include endorsements of any candidates or other electioneering. Do we have folks registered for citizen statements? No, we do not. All right, how about public comment on agenda items? Yes, we do, we have several. Um, our first citizen is going to speak to item number 19, which is resolution 21423, um, Kathy Webb, and then Tess Alvarez. All right. Yes, please step forward to the podium. State your name and address. Welcome. Kathy Webb, 543 Otter Ave. And I am here representing River East Neighborhood. 
Um, we are requesting funds to. Madam Mayor, microphone. Can we get you the. Yeah, Thank there you. we go. We are requesting funds to um, put up a gazebo in Riverside Park. At one time there was two gazebos, but this year we're just asking for one. And we are hoping that it can be uh, put up near the convention center so that it can be used for their weddings. But we would like to be able to use it for our neighborhood night out and just for our neighbors and anybody else that likes to use that park that would be available um, for shade. And I know I've talked to Ray Maurer and there's many different designs and it's something that he said the parks department would be able to install. So it's not gonna be this fancy one like we're putting in William Waters Plaza, but um, something that would just be nice that people could uh, enjoy the summer months and, um, and then the convention center would be able to have for their, their weddings and different events that they have. So that is all I've got. Thank you, Kathy. Mayor? Yes, over here. <laughs> um, I'm going to call all the individuals that want to speak to item number 19 first. We'll do it in that order so that we can stay on topic. So the next one is going to be Emily Richardson and then Victoria Shore. Emily, please come forward. Emily Richardson. Is Emily Richardson here? All right, perhaps she'll show up later. Then Victoria Shore. Victoria? Victoria Shore. Third and final call for Victoria Shore. Okay. okay, then we'll move on to item number 43, Ordinance 21447, and that's Tess Alvarez. Madam Tess Mayor. Alvarez, please step forward. Madam Mayor, while all this person's coming up, oh, please come up. Don't, don't, uh, it sounds like we're having some technical difficulties, people hearing, so if you've called anybody online, they may not hear you, so we're trying to get that worked out as we speak. So. Okay, well, so the folks on the virtual do not have audio. The WebEx, they, they're, they're having a trouble hearing. So I just want to point that out. So um, we, we may have some people that want to participate and we'll, do, we'll get to them as soon as we can. All right, thank you. Welcome. Hi, Hi thank you. I'm Tess Alvarez, 2061 Richards Avenue, Oshkosh, Wisconsin, 54904. And I'm here to let you know why I think it's important we lower the fine for simple marijuana possession from $200 to $75. I find it dangerous to lump marijuana with other hard drugs and more serious high dollar fined crimes. I grew up in Oshkosh. I currently live in Oshkosh where I work and raise a family. I graduated from the University of Wisconsin-Madison. I'm a proud Badger. I love the state of Wisconsin and specifically this area. Growing up in Oshkosh, I always got good grades, was involved in sports, extracurricular activities. I won the DARE essay in elementary school, just always cared about doing the right thing. As I grew, I started to notice a large disconnect um, regarding marijuana. I found that parents' friends, friends' parents, prominent people in our town who were successful, happy, healthy, contributing members in our society were using marijuana. And this was a very big difference from what I was being taught. As I continued to get older, I started experimenting myself, like most kids do. I started with cigarettes, went to alcohol, and then to marijuana, to realize that marijuana wasn't that bad. Surely, in my opinion, not as bad as alcohol. Since marijuana was lumped with these other hard drugs, I figured, like marijuana, they weren't that bad either. So I tried ecstasy, I tried cocaine, I tried heroin, to realize that these other drugs were terrible, very terrible. I later became addicted to opiates. I was fortunate enough to put myself into rehab to get counseling and to stay clean but I had countless other friends, all raised in this community, who were not so lucky. They died from drug overdoses, 
and they died from suicide largely due to these drug addictions. Many of these young adults you may also know or have heard of. And this is the exact reason why I find it so important to stop lumping marijuana with these other hard drugs and these other more serious high dollar fined crimes. I think it's misleading and again dangerous to our citizens and most importantly to our youth. Just like me, when they try marijuana and they realize that it's not so bad, they try other really terrible, life-altering, addictive drugs that ruin lives. I believe a part of the puzzle of the many lives I saw being taken to drugs would have been helped had they been told the truth. Also, with today's research, we know that marijuana has medicinal benefits. When I was about 18 years old, I watched a close friend from this community who is smart, who is driven, loved, and an involved young adult pass away from cancer. The thing that helped them mentally and physically process the fact that they were losing their life at such a young age was marijuana. Again, another very large disconnect from what I was being taught, and I'm still very affected by this all today. These are only a few ways you can believe that marijuana prohibition has affected me. And I know there are so many others out there who have been affected so much more than I have been. I urge you to see the importance of this issue in our community and in our state to keep our citizens and our youth safe and to send a message of truth. At the very least, that marijuana should be treated like alcohol. Open up these conversations with people you respect, you love, and know this is going on in so many more ways than you may even realize. And if it's not affecting you like it is me, it probably is to other people close to you if you open up those conversations. I'm here in this community and I'm open to continue this conversation and or answer any further questions. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. TJ Hobbs and then Cindy Kerwin. TJ Hobbs. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Excuse me. <clears throat> Good evening, Council. My name is TJ Hobbs. Whoop. There we go. I am here today to propose, oh, excuse me, my address first. So I live at 136 High Ave in Oshkosh, Unit C, 54901. I'm a college graduate of UW Oshkosh, and I I'm happy to be back in the city uh, living with my husband who's at home watching our dog so I could be here today, so thank you to him. Council, I am here today to propose that the city of Oshkosh change its marijuana fine policy from $200 for possession of marijuana to $1 for possession of marijuana as well as confiscation of that marijuana. Now that is not an original idea, that is what the city of Madison is currently operating on and that's working really well for them. Uh, but this also would include eliminating court costs and criminal charges for the possession of marijuana. Because I'm sure y'all don't need me to read the stats, but I have them here. We all know alcohol kills more people per year and opioids kill more people per year as well in Wisconsin. Uh, approximately two to three thousand per deaths, or excuse me, two to three thousand deaths per year annually attributed to alcohol. Well, there's about 750 opioid overdose deaths per year in Wisconsin. Uh, conversely, there are no deaths to report in Wisconsin attributed to the use of marijuana. I'm here as a citizen wondering why the least lethal drug of the three is the one that's currently banned and fined in our city. Our city of Oshkosh and our state continues to lose forward-thinking individuals in forward-thinking industries while we claim forward as our state motto. Tonight, we have the opportunity to modernize our city's policies regarding possession of a drug less deadly than legal drugs sold and taxed right now at our local bars, restaurants, and pharmacies. 
And the reduction of this fine from 200 to a dollar is a way that we can help make Oshkosh more livable for its residents while taking a necessary step to modernize our city and ourselves in preparation for what's naturally happening and what's coming next, which is statewide marijuana legalization and taxation to pay for social services in Oshkosh and across Wisconsin. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have anyone else registered? Yes, we do. For number 43, we have Cindy Kerwin. Cindy, welcome. You might need to adjust the mic there for you. Thank you. Hello, my name is Cindy Kerwin. I've been here before, not in this place. I represent Decriminalize Oshkosh. Back a few years, and we've done this many years, with many help from many people, trying to have people understand that this is a medicine also. Yes, anybody can misuse things, but I'm here to say our state is losing so much money. You have no idea how much money is just being lost by everybody going because every single state around us is legal. I'm 62 years old. I've been watching marijuana, alcohol, opiates. This last, this Sunday, I was at a memorial for a friend that just died from another opiate. We couldn't have his funeral last year. They just, everybody's going crazy because they're being locked down. Yes, there's a lot of people doing alcohol, but Alcohol, people get a little crazy. Opiates, they get crazy. And all there's, please, please, please understand, this is also a medicine. In, in, in all these different circles, we've had so many people dying from cancer and, and all these other ailments. I will go to other states and find different things to help these people that I'm watching die. I have family members dying. My brother now has cancer. My mother's had cancer. My father died of cancer. I'm sure everybody that you know, somebody has died of cancer. This is a medicine. I, this last year, had COVID. I had it for four months. I was so sick, I was in the hospital five times, three times to the ER. The only thing that helped me was edibles. I couldn't keep anything down. They gave me 22 pills. I didn't even take any pills before that. If it wasn't for that, I would have never survived it. I begged people to drive over me. I was in so much pain. This is no joke. Would I take alcohol? No way, I'd be sicker than a dog. I'm already sick in the bathroom. This is medicine. For us to even find somebody for taking medicine, and then we've got people pushing drugs that are pills. 22 pills they had me on. 22, I couldn't even keep them down. I was in the bathroom when I wasn't even in the bathroom before. I lost some of my teeth. If it wasn't for having cannabis, I think I would have killed myself, and I understand why some people do. I'm older. I've watched since 14 years old had people that were dealers, and I didn't understand. Oh, because they have connections, they didn't get caught? But it doesn't matter. This is something that almost everybody, I stood on corners, I stood, I walked down roads to get over 6,000 signatures with our friends to get this fine down. I stayed until two, three o'clock in the morning at gas stations because I knew people would come out of the bars. To get that down, the fine, this is not, yes, you can abuse it, you can abuse anything. I haven't taken heroin, I haven't done all these crazy opiates, but I'm watching everybody dying from them. Please, bring that fine down. This is not something that, I mean, there's so many evil people out there that are doing evil things. Please catch them. 
I'm not an evil person, and I know a lot of people that are not. Please, bring it legal here someday so we can get the money for our state. I cannot tell you how many people are going out of state and buying because it's legal. We feel like we're like locked down and, and like, it's ridiculous. I'm 62 years old. This is ridiculous. Before I die, and I almost did, I want to see this legal. I don't want to see any fines. Start making money. Let's make our money. Make forward, Wisconsin forward. Wisconsin was the biggest grower in hemp. Just wrap up your comments, please. We're at five minutes. Thank you. OK. I just had to come here. I just seen this. And like I said, I've got way more than 6,000 people behind me in Oshkosh. And we know that. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, item number 45, resolution 21449. Our first individual is Michelle Deppa and then Daryl McGill. Michelle? Michelle Deppa? Yep. Michelle Deppa? I just have the next person I believe is Allison Stromsky. She should be on there as well. She's my daughter. Uh, we both live at 1883 Preserve Drive, Oshkosh, 54904. And we are going to be speaking to the um, proposal of a walking path going from our neighborhood, um, which is a new development, Preserve Drive, connecting up to the trail system that is part of the Sawyer Creek system that's behind Traeger School. Um, my biggest concern um, living where we're living right now is that there is no sidewalk and we are on 20th Street. Anyone that's been out there knows that that can be a very, very busy and very dangerous um, area. So if we decide we want to um, go for a bike ride or walk our dog or go for a walk, there is a section of the road that we have to literally walk on the road. Um, part of it is immensely overgrown so there are times when it is two two lanes you have traffic coming at you they don't get over and you have to literally jump into overgrowth um, so consideration of a of a path being formed would be um, great um, there is also a assisted living community that is adjacent to our neighborhood that I think that this would benefit them. It would give them an opportunity to go ahead and have a place to walk as well. Uh, that would be safe, out of traffic. Um, otherwise, they are kind of isolated without any sidewalks. Thank you for your time. And now my daughter would like to speak. Welcome. Hello, my name is Allison Stromsky. I'm 12 years old and a member of the cross country running team at Lourdes Academy. Being part of the team means that I run a lot, but the only way to get to my running trail is through 20th Street, which you may know to be a very busy street because of its location near a school and the YMCA. The street has very little sidewalks, which means I'm stuck running on the road face to face with cars. And you may be thinking that I could just run through the grass, but the lot is currently overgrown with lots of dead plants where someone could easily trip and break their ankle. So with the path, many people would be able to benefit from a place to bike, run, and walk their dogs. Meanwhile, my mom won't have to worry about me as I am on my run. Sometimes I like to go out on a run or walk my dog a little later in the day. So as the sun starts to set, it becomes more dangerous because the glare of the sun can interfere with drivers being able to see pedestrians. If we have a path, I would feel safer running because whenever I'm running on the road, there is always a feeling of anxiety which is strange because usually running is supposed to get rid of stress and anxiety. So if we had a path, we would be able to avoid potential accidents. And with people texting these days, running on the street is not as safe as running on paths or sidewalks. Thank you for your consideration. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Daryl McGill. Daryl, yes. 
Please step forward. Thank you. <clears throat> Welcome. Thank you. Good evening. Thank you for uh, thank you for allowing me to speak. Um, I'm a 2000 graduate, 2007 graduate of Leadership Oshkosh. Uh, I live in Oshkosh. Uh, I live in a new community, a fairly young community, out at the uh, Sawyer Creek Preserve. Uh, it's a community that was recently uh, ideated and put together by Chet Wiesenberg, and uh, uh, it is a neighborhood that's going to consist of 23 homes. I currently represent this community as the chairman of the HOA in this area. Um, I have a great interest in, um, uh, in advocating for the members of our community and having a good recreation solution for them other than just walking on the road. Um, when we bought into the neighborhood, Chet proposed that there would be a walking path available to the neighbors in this area. And I understand prior to this meeting that there is uh, capital improvement funds earmarked for the year 2023 as an extension to the Roos Park Trail uh, network. Um, however, uh, because of some of the safety concerns and one of whom you heard from this evening, um, I, I am also concerned about uh, the safety of the people who live here. And I'm just asking that uh, in lieu of any additional funding that the city has, we would certainly appreciate your consideration to um, provide us with that extension um, as soon as possible. And if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, 1841 Preserve Drive, Oshkosh, Wisconsin, 54904. Thank you. Council uh, Member Ford has a yeah. question. Well, I also have um, a map here of a neighborhood that represents the people that live in our community. Is any, can I leave this here with you? Uh, you can register it with the clerk over here. Great, thank uh, you. One moment though, um, Mr. Uh, Council Member Ford has a question. Yeah, yes. just, and you may not know the answer to this, but looking at the CIP, the, uh, so the 2023 funds you're talking about, that's the $200,000. So this, what you want, the extension you want is not, would be in addition to that funding, is that correct? That's not included in the no, project? No, that, that is just the funding for, for that the, is, is your mark. Okay, so you're hoping to get the project moved up a year? That's correct. Got it, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, item number 46, resolution 21450. Jim Folks and then John Kinnear. Jim Folks. And please state your name and address. Hello, my name is Jim Fox. I'm uh, representing Oshkosh Area Schools. My address is 1405 South Main Street, Oshkosh. I'm here tonight to speak on behalf of Oshkosh Area Schools, Resolution uh, 46, uh, for the um, planning overlay. Oshkosh Area Schools would like to further develop their existing athletic turf field, natural turf field, at the site of the current high school. Is currently a soccer field. We would like to transform that field into a uh, synthetic turf field. In order to do that, um, we need a planning overlay that will allow lighting to allow our athletes to play later, earlier in the spring, um, as well as the fall months. Uh, this is um, this is a field that will uh, continue to host the same type of athletic activities that it is currently hosted, mainly uh, freshman, JV, soccer, and football. Uh, it'll also serve as a, as a great place for our uh, training in the summertime, strength and conditioning camps. We are losing a crucial athletic field that we use for overflow activities on Jackson Street, which is the site of our new middle school construction, which will be occurring next year. So this field becomes very uh, critical within our athletics program. And I'm here to show support and answer any questions that you may have relative to this project. Uh, with me tonight is uh, uh, John here with Rettler Association. He will answer any questions as well. Do council members have questions at this point? Um, I, I do have one, uh, Mr. Fox, since you're here. 
and that is, um, I, I was watching the Plan Commission meeting today, and um, I think there was a question about whether or not there was a net and a fence um, kind of doubling up, and I, I believe they said yes. So are they um, one in front of the other, or part fence and at the top part net? Because I didn't quite understand the answer listening to that. Right, great question. So the, it'll be both. Uh, there will be net on either side of the turf field, 30 feet tall, to stop soccer balls from leaving, or footballs from leaving that field. Uh, where the baseball field and the turf field meet, you'll have a, a woven mesh fence, but then on the other side of that will be a net. So they're, they're, does that make sense? There's two different systems, but they'll be back to back. One really serving the baseball field as the outfield fence, but then the net will be a 30 foot tall field, whereas the fence is, is it eight feet, John? The baseball field fence? The baseball field fence? I'm sorry, baseball field fence is 12 feet. The net would be 30 feet. I just, I, I think one of the plan commission members had asked um, why there might be a need for both. So the, both fences, the combination on the north side where baseball and the proposed synthetic turf field meet, uh, we have the hard uh, mesh fence for a boundary for uh, establishing home runs, creating an uh, out of field play for the baseball field. And then the netting itself, and this is uh, uh, black vinyl coated fencing as well that we're looking at using. Uh, from there above, uh, that's gonna create a backstop to catch home run balls <coughs> and to stop soccer and footballs from uh, passing onto the, onto the baseball field. So we use that combination of fencing for playability in both baseball uh, in the multi-sport facility to the south, the proposed synthetic field. Thank you, and I'm sorry, I didn't catch your name. Name, John Kinnear. Kinnear, okay. N2455 East Minor in Wapaka with Rettler Corporation. Do other council members have any questions? All right, thank you so much for clarifying. Thank you, thank you. Okay, Madam Mayor, we're gonna go back to item number 19, resolution 21423. We have Emily Richeson and Victoria Shorzy here. All right, Emily first and then Victoria. Oh, okay, so we have Victoria first. <laughs> Okay, Vicki. I asked my mother once why she, it, why she didn't name me Victoria, and she said, well, they'll call you Vicki anyway. <laughs> so, um, good evening, and thank you for your support of Greater Oshkosh Healthy Neighborhoods. Oh, we really appreciate it. I am Vicki Shorsey, 1224 Algoma Boulevard, and president of the Sawyer Payne Neighborhood Association. SPNA is comprised of the Algoma Boulevard Historic District and surrounding area. In large part, it includes several churches and a synagogue, the Oshkosh Public Museum, Payne Art Center, and a significant and growing number of rental houses and apartments. It's kind of an interesting situation. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, Brad Larson, Director of the Oshkosh Public Museum and Marketing Coordinator, Tammy Maluski, have actively participated in planning for this project, as evidenced by Brad's letter of support provided with our Great Neighborhoods application. Tammy is also an active member of the SPNA leadership team. SPNA Treasurer and Project Leader Emily Richeson will now recap the project for your consideration, and we do appreciate your consideration of it. Please let us know if you have any questions, and thank you very much. Thank you, welcome. And please state your name and address also. Thank you. <coughs> My name is Emily Richeson. I live at 1301 Algoma Boulevard. Uh, our proposed project is for an open-sided pavilion or a large gazebo to be constructed on the grounds of the Oshkosh Public Museum. The probable site is between the existing public parking lot 
and the fence along El Goma Boulevard. This structure will be accessible and capable of accommodating 20 to 30 people. Its architecture will be consistent with the proximate historic buildings. After construction, the gazebo will be managed and maintained by the Oshkosh Public Museum. The Sawyer Payne neighborhood is economically and ethnically diverse. It currently has no accessible public space suitable for neighborhood gatherings. We would like to create a neutral public space where neighbors can get together for meetings and or social activities. This gazebo will also be available to school groups and other visitors to the museum, as well as groups who have made out-of-hours arrangements with the museum. Our application to the Great Neighborhood Program is for funds for initial design work. It is anticipated this work will be done by Sake Design, Inc. in Madison, with whom the museum has worked successfully in the past. This initial design work will be used in an application to go h and for funds for detailed design work and actual construction. Are there any questions? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mayor, we have no further individuals registered to speak. We just want to mention what was in your folder for the record. And then I do have Stephanie, she's virtual, that when we get to item number 43, um, she's from the county to answer questions for you. All right, very good. So we have registered the email from Nikki Hardy, um, the Winnebago County Health Department with a uh, memo in support of reducing the fine. And that, okay, so that concludes our public comments. We'll move on to consent agenda. And I have a motion and a second. So moved. Second. second. Any discussion on consent agenda items? Oh. Council Member Ford. Yeah, I just want to point out quickly to the people who testified in item 19, that's part of the consent agenda. So if we do pass the consent agenda, that item is approved. All right, anyone else, consent? All right, please call the roll on consent agenda. Ugerauer? Aye. Hansen? Aye. Miller? Aye. Wojciechowski? Aye. Erickson? Aye. Ford? Aye. Palmieri? Aye. Period seven. We will move to pending ordinances 21-443, approve zone change from institutional district one, or I'm sorry, I think that's I, to institutional districts with a planned development overlay, IPD, for property located on the south 1000 block of West Smith Avenue. Plan commission recommends approval. They have a motion and a second. So moved. Second. Discussion. All right, seeing none, please call the roll. Mugerauer? Aye. Hansen? Aye. <coughs> Miller? Aye. Wojciechowski? Aye. Erickson? Aye. Ford? Aye. Palmieri? Aye. Carried seven. Next, we have several new ordinances. Uh, there will be no action on these items this evening. The first one is 21444, amend Landmarks Commission Ordinance to correct code references. The second one is 21445, amend ordinance for streets to remain open during course of excavation work to authorize the Director of Public Works to approve closures necessary for emergency work or to allow for safe conditions for workers. 21446, amend ordinance 25104.2 to provide an administrative process for variances for unusual conditions to be granted from the city's access control ordinance with appeal to plan commission. That was a mouthful and um, I, I probably will be asking some questions on that one to clarify. Um, ordinance 21447, amend ordinance for marijuana possession penalties for adults. This is, again, the first reading. And then 21448, amend building ordinance to correct administrative code reference. Do we have any discussion on any of these items 
that there will be no action on tonight. All right, we will move on to new resolutions 21449, approved 2022 to 2026 capital improvement plan. We have a motion and a second, please. So moved. Second. Discussion. <clears throat> Council Member Ford. Yeah, I just want to point out a few things that are in uh, the capital improvements plan. Uh, budget is, you know, is a sign of what we care about in the city, a sign of our priorities. Capital improvement project reflects that. A uh, couple highlights in here. We have uh, on facilities, big money spent on our roofing replacement program and on ADA improvements on city buildings. I point that out because that demonstrates our commitment to maintenance, making sure things don't cost longer or cost more in the long run, and making sure our public buildings are accessible. Uh, police and fire, we have money in there to replace radios and to buy a new ambulance. Obviously, that's important for public safety. All kinds of good stuff on road construction, which is probably the number one thing that people come, at least to me, to complain about. It's the quality of the roads, so it's nice to see we're doing something about those. Uh, streets and sanitation, maybe not the most exciting things, but having money for new trucks that keeps our roads plowed, that keeps our garbage picked up. I swear I'm not going to read the whole thing. <laughs> uh, but I am going to keep going here. Uh, for the Parks Department, we have money in there, $3 million for a new parks building. If you've been to the old building, it's basically an airport hangar, and it's in desperate need of repair. So really pleased to see that money in there. Um, we have significant investments in our water. Obviously, we need clean drinking water. And then a whole bunch of funding for our parkland improvement, keeping our public spaces high quality and accessible. Um, you can go online and see where all this money is coming from, and I urge people to do so if you're curious. I know I get a lot of questions about you know, how much money we're spending on this, where is it coming from. I think that this CIP is pretty responsible. It keeps our debt under control, um, and I'm happy to have more discussion about this and pleased to uh, support it in concept. Thanks. Deputy Mayor Mugrauer. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, I appreciate Councilmember Ford's uh, statements down there that's it's good to highlight what we're trying to do uh, the improvements we're trying to make for the community and and um, so I appreciate that that he took the time to, to do that one uh, one he, he he glanced over he did talk about road construction uh, a mile stretch of Algoma Boulevard um, that is in desperate need of repair um, is in the books for 2022 so that's that's a, a big thing it's gonna have a big impact on the community in terms of travel but uh, absolute necessity in, in terms of uh, improving the road conditions in the campus area as well as just uh, a main thoroughfare so um, I don't want to um, I want to make sure every council member who wants to speak has a chance but after anybody else I'm gonna I'll make a suggestion that we lay this over and I'll explain why when I do so but um, this is the good of the community this is what we're trying to do this, these are the improvements we're trying to make this isn't um, um, everything we'd like to do no budgets perfect no no process is perfect but our city staff does a phenomenal job of, of bringing us a plan that that is um, financially reasonable and, and fiscally responsible and um, we're gonna try and, and take a big whack at some things in 2022 so that's all I got on this unless uh, somebody else else wants, wants to go and I just like to add on to the trail here because I think it was the riveting radio show this morning uh, about the CIP that probably got the new host lots of ratings because I was excited about replacing ozone generators. Mr. Robbie here? Anyway. Um, thank you. And if we have no further council input, Deputy Mayor. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I move to lay this, the approval of what is it? 21449 over to the next regularly scheduled council meeting. Second. Yes, second. second. Council Mayor Ford seconds. All right, any discussion? Please go ahead. Yep, uh, just for an explanation as to why. Um, a brief synopsis. Uh, the way the process works, city manager along with the finance staff present to, to council a number that that they think we might be comfortable with in terms of, of projects and debt and a plan. And this council saw fit to, 
to give them a little bit more leeway to that we see some financial resources available to us that it might be the right time to make some more investments in this community. Uh, and so we gave them a little bit more latitude in terms of some debt that we might be willing to take on. Um, but um, council didn't have a real, a real chance to talk about some of those pieces that, that got inserted into the, the capital improvements plan, uh, at least uh, in my opinion, didn't get a chance to discuss it enough. And I think it'd be appropriate for us to lay this over for a meeting so we have an opportunity to uh, give some more thoughts and or uh, properly word some possible amendments um, to keep the process clean and to make sure uh, city manager and, and the finance staff uh, if we want to make some changes know exactly what we want to make and uh, to do it properly so that would be the reason for my my move to lay it over just for one meeting I'll be supporting that motion Councilmember Ford I'd like to ask the uh, finance director if laying this over would have any impact on implementation or on municipal finances. While he, while he comes up, can I just make a quick little ad? Thank you, sir. Um, the reason for it, it centers around just under $3 million. Um, that's the only part that, that uh, it's not that I have concern with it, but that uh, I think council just needs to talk about more. Everything up to that, uh, this council seems to have been fully on board with previously. But uh, that's the reason for, for me and, and making the suggestion. So appreciate the extra few seconds, Councilmember Board. Uh, to answer your question, no, it does not. Uh, what we'd like to do, and the reason we set up our budget calendar, is we get a good feel for the projects that you're willing to tackle, and we can roll that into the operating budget, which we're hard at work preparing right now. Um, so a two-week delay would be. Um, okay and acceptable but it's just that whole process of taking those projects then and putting it into the operating budget um, we would like your approval you know sooner than later but I certainly understand thank you just just one addition and I, I agree with mr. Van Gompel um, I talked to Ms. knife or so um, the purpose of uh, bringing this forward is uh, primarily at this time of year is to get the plan Commission to uh, recommend adoption because it is consistent with our uh, comprehensive plan they've done that last week so basically the balls in your court it's a timing issue if you wait two more weeks that that'll be fine for budget all right and it, it does seem too that uh, you know this year is kind of exciting we've actually had I think more input uh, from citizens on the budget process um, you know we, we heard from a couple folks tonight that were interested in how we uh, prioritize uh, some of the projects uh, we've heard from others and uh, certainly you know there there may be some some tweaking as well as some additions so I, I'll be supporting this motion to lay over for that purpose anyone else all right please call the roll Aye. Hansen? Aye. Miller? Aye. Wojciechowski? Aye. Erickson? Aye. Ford? Aye. Palmieri? Aye. Carried seven. All right, very good. Our next uh, new resolution is 21450, approved general development plan and specific implementation plan for property located on the south 1000 block of West Smith Avenue. Plan Commission recommends approval. So moved. Second. And discussion. Deputy Mayor. Actually, not much discussion, just a, a comment for the school district staff and their consultant. Um, what a fun uh, and, and uh, well-deserved improvement to the athletic facilities for, for the Oshkosh North student body, as well as any of the, any of the other user groups that get to use it. Um, just, you know wasn't very long ago it was long ago but I'll just say it wasn't very long ago when I was playing on some of those similar fields and it's just it's always nice to see school fields improved in this particular case kind of the cost of, of progress in terms of you lost Schumer's field and um, and that access over there on on Jackson at the, the new Merrill site but uh, I'm excited for it I'm, I'm happy for it I'm happy to see you know just how you guys have been interacting with the neighbors and being a good partner over there and um, so just happy for the students that they get to, to have access to a, a high caliber facility to to do their athletics so good for you guys other council members 
I, I'd just like to say that um, watching the plan commission, I really appreciated the um, effort by the Oshkosh Area School District to incorporate and be somewhat flexible with some of those planning efforts. And uh, we certainly welcome the opportunity uh, for neighborhoods to have input on you know, these decisions. Um, I, I do have a question, if I may, for Council Member Ford, though. Um, it appears that several of the plan commission members were a bit concerned about some notices that didn't quite make it out. So I don't know if you want to weigh in on that. Yeah, I mean, the people were, were concerned. Um, city staff did say that the proper notices um, went out and it did pass 7-0 at plant commission. So those uh, concerns were addressed. All right, thank you. Please call the roll. Mugler or? Aye. Hansen? Aye. Miller? Aye. Wojciechowski? Aye. Erickson? Aye. Ford? Aye. Palmieri? Aye. Carried seven. All right, and next we are at council discussion, direction to city manager future agenda items. <laughs> Do any council members have future agenda items they'd like to suggest at this time that aren't already on the docket? All right, so we are at discussion of virtual meetings. Madam Mayor, this was put on the agenda by staff to, uh, with uh, recent changes, uh, putting the mask requirement back in uh, city buildings. Uh, the, the issue was really, does council have any desire to do any changes with their, their meetings? Do they want to go back to virtual meetings? It's not that we're recommending it. We just wanted to make sure that if that was something you wanted to do, we would take, take your direction. Um, that's really the purpose of the item on the agenda. Uh I do have a question. So how much extra work is it for us to move over into this space to accommodate? Quite a bit. Just how many hours it. of staff time does it take it's, to set up? It's more than just the chairs. I think the technical issues are much greater. So Mr. Newman and some of his staff, Mr. Tim and some of his staff, as well as facilities, um, I don't have an exact number, but I would say it took uh, probably at least half the day today for them to get everything set up properly. And Mr. Newman oh, is saying Oh, I see higher. some hand. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So More and, than that. And with, with all that preparation, uh, we were still having some technical difficulties at the beginning of the meeting. It's, it's, it's a challenge, uh, as it is for, for any situation like this. All right, other council members want to weigh in? No. Council member Wojciechowski. I guess this isn't, so maybe this is just for us, I don't know, more information. DEI uh, decided our next meeting will be virtual, so. So DEI is going back to virtual? I don't know if we're doing it permanently or it was, just, it was just made for that decision for our next, our upcoming meeting, so with that. Other council member liaisons? If if you want to share that as well, it'd be helpful. Councilmember Erickson. Uh, for transit, I believe we just met uh, recently, but I believe we're going to continue in person. Rental Housing Advisory Board has been virtual and is, I believe, staying virtual for the, the convenience of it. Um, I think my perspective on this, I'm comfortable meeting in person for us. Um, you know, now that masks are required again in city buildings. Um, and I appreciate having the, the virtual option for people who are wanting to speak or just, you know, listen in. So I'm fine with staying in person, but I appreciate having the space to talk about it since things have been changing pretty quickly. Councilmember Ford. Yeah, Plan Commission did decide to go uh, virtual. Um, and just like Councilwoman Erickson, I think we need to stay in person as a, uh, as a council. I think we've learned how to do it. Deputy Mayor. Sure, I'll chime in. Um, no, I concur with my, my fellow colleagues. Uh, prefer to say exactly how we're doing it. Um, we know hybrid is a challenge. I think that's an understatement, but also it's just point blank, it's a challenge for city staff or for tech. 
um, not just for them, but uh, you know, we experienced it tonight. By making the move over here, it did create an accessibility issue for our residents. Now, it was temporary, hopefully. Uh, hopefully, you know, we've got it resolved and, and, we've, and we've, we've learned for next time and hopefully we won't have that. Um, I can trust City Manager Roloff to, if he feels there's a, an agenda coming up that might warrant us sitting in this room versus City Hall, then he has my confidence uh, to, to make that call uh, personally. But, um, so if we have to be here because there's an agenda topic that would warrant a large crowd, might be appropriate. But otherwise, City Hall seems like a, a pretty comfortable spot for me to sit. Councilmember Hanson. Uh, public arts and beautification is staying in person. And do you have a preference? I prefer to stay in person. I, I'm sorry. Thank you. I prefer to stay in person as well. All right. Councilmember Miller. Yeah, Landmarks is, uh, is, is staying in person, and I, I think you guys have all said we're, you're in favor of in person, so that's fine with me. Thank you. I appreciate uh, all the council members giving their input, and I guess, you know, one of the things that I, I noticed in reading the municipality this month, there was an article uh, by Kurt Witensky from the League of Wisconsin Municipalities, and what I took away from that, and it was about this very topic, and uh, what you can do, what you should do, but bottom line, whatever you do, the, the recommendation that I took away from that was that we should at least have a policy. And I guess I'd kind of ask uh, City Attorney Lawrence, and if I could maybe last minute put you on the spot here. Um, have, have you heard from other municipalities whether or not they're implementing a policy um, for the foreseeable future with regard to access for um, not just council members but citizens and boards and commissions uh, virtual options some of the municipalities have started looking at that I think um, we were a little bit ahead of the curve already bringing our, po our revised policy to you um, I actually have my conference next week and I can bring it up there and see I know that some of them were looking at ours because they had not taken that next step yet thank you all right so city manager um, do you have your what you thank, need thank you uh, you know we'll uh, we'll continue obviously the in-person meetings with council uh, you know everything at this time because everything you know, subject to change. The numbers still uh, haven't been improving. Uh, they aren't as bad as they were late last fall, but we'll, we'll keep an eye on those things. Uh, we're gonna continue to have the mask uh, requirement in place in, in City Hall through October 1st. So that's the, that's the plan for the, for the foreseeable future. And we'll probably have this on the agenda all the way through October 1st to keep everybody posted and uh, Oshkosh Media is putting information out. The departments are putting information out. And so far, it's going okay. All right. Thank you. Our next item is just a reminder, placeholder for August 31st, uh, noon to 5. Um, we still don't have a location for that, correct? We do, we do have a location. Uh, we were able to secure uh, a TJ's Harbor Restaurant uh, south of town. Uh, they will be ready for council uh, for new, for lunch at noon, and uh, Mr. Fowski has indicated that we should be able to be done by four o'clock, so that council can hightail it back to City Hall for the five o'clock workshop. And Diane will be sending you a, a reminder, so you have that. And uh, if you need a your GPS coordinates or, or the uh, address to enter in Re your GPS. Remind me, is TJ's in the city limits? No, it is not. Okay. Hmm. All right. Thank you. And then the budget workshop, of course, at five o'clock. And our third and fourth budget workshops in October. Just a reminder, those are full days. Um, eight, did we say eight or 8.30? Uh, start, start time for those in October. Eight o'clock is usually the start time. All right, and discussion on non-renewal of license fees. 
Ms. Uberg had provided a memo, and I guess if there's any questions, Ms. Uberg's happy to answer them, get some direction from council. She made some recommendations, and I think she sent some other stuff out this afternoon just to <coughs> do a little clarifying. Pam, is there anything to add? Yes. Uh, no, but I'd be happy to answer questions of the council. Looks like uh, there were a couple of options in that, in that memo, and uh, if, if I understand correctly, you're looking for direction on which way we intend to go with that if, if one of those options is selected. Councilmember Miller. Thank you, Mayor. Pam, what, what is your and your staff's preference? I mean, we, we, we want to make this easy for everybody, including staff. So, but I, I just want to make sure that if, if, if we're, we're not kicking these people in the teeth twice. So, I mean, so, so tell me how you would prefer, you and your staff would prefer to see this work. I feel that there should be no refund because there's enough time with our staff involved in these licenses that it quantifies the fee this is the first time i think i've ever disagreed with you in my entire life that's okay <laughs> um so let me ask another question <laughs> what is your second best option <laughs> my second option is um in the previous hearing there was a discussion of six hundred dollars so originally, if the applicant had filed on time, he would have paid $450. So I don't feel that late fee or that new fee of 150 should be refunded because he was late. So if I take that off and we drop it to the, the original renewal fee of 450, I could agree with half of that being refund. And I can agree with that. So thank you for making me look not quite so bad. It's okay, I can compromise. <laughs> so, I, I mean, if everybody agrees with that, I, I, I think that's, a, that, that, that's very fair on, on our part and certainly on Pam's part. Yes, I, I believe the, one of the options was about considering a policy for a more specific notice, and that's what the recommendation was along with that, correct? Correct. When we send out renewals, when we know of a business that's going to come forth with they haven't used their license, that we would give them notice on a, a colored piece of paper, uh, more direct that if you, realizing that if you do apply for this license, it's going to move forward with a hearing. And then they would have the option. To remove it. Correct. Or withdraw, okay. Right. I'm sorry, Deputy Mayor, did you have something else? Yeah, okay, go ahead. You, if you're finished. No, I'm finished. Perfect, um, <coughs> pardon me, sorry. Um, uh, this afternoon, I communicated a little bit with with uh, city attorney and, and city clerk and the deputy city clerk on the topic, and um, just got some more clarification in terms of the of this topic. Um, I'm a, I appreciated that council last time uh, saw the wisdom to just to be patient on that topic. I, I was uh, myself a little surprised. You know, uh, we all learned that night that we don't refund that. Uh, it was just a surprise. Um, I'm glad we didn't make an emotional decision that evening. I think that's it's important to make sure that we're making rational and and informed decisions. Um, there are there are parts of this process that um, there are steps within this process that that applicants take that uh, they may get their full refund real fast. Uh, that's correct, uh, City Clerk and Brig. Basically, if if they apply, first step is going to be you know is paperwork filled out correct. Step two. For a new application, you know, it's going to go through OPD, and maybe at that point, if if there's a red flag, the process is over, and they're going to get a refund. Is that accurate? That is correct. Okay, so there are steps at which point they do get a refund. So it is not all or nothing. Uh, that's that's good to learn. Um, I think it's appropriate to make sure that that city time is also uh, city staff time is also not quote unquote wasted with um, with applications that aren't substantiated or at least able to be fulfilled. So that, that's, a, that's a point that I think the city clerk brought up as well in, in some communication. Um, and then one final thing, Mr. Ford and I were actually having a discussion and, and it kind of it, it hit me earlier that, uh, you know, during our TIF, TIF applications and TIF discussions, if a developer wants the city of Oshkosh to consider a TIF, they've got to write a $10,000 check. And we don't give that back if we deny that. that 
opened my eyes. That, re that just it reminded me to open my eyes a little bit in terms of the the processes we use and to make sure we're fair throughout. So if we plan on making one change, we we should have consideration for other parts of the processes that we have. That we have some much other larger expenses in the building area and the planning and zoning that we're not considering at the moment too. So just make an informed decision I think is, is all I'm asking council to do. I'm, I'm still on the fence myself. I can see a, a reason why, but there's a lot of other ones, a lot of other fees and applications that we, uh, that we take in that we don't refund that are even bigger expenses. So consider those things as well. Councilmember Ford. Yeah, I'm okay with the, uh, the compromise that Councilman Miller uh, brought up. I think the larger issue here is also a, a public education effort that as, as we continue to go down this process for non-renewal of licenses that aren't being used, we need to educate individuals that own these licenses. Let them know that if you're going to apply or to renew a license that you're not actually going to use, you, you have to expect you're not going to, we're going to take that back um, as a matter of being consistent with with different businesses. So I think the best way to avoid having the discussion about whether we have to refund a fee like this is to make sure people understand the rules going in. And um, Pam, when, when the packets are given out, um, all of that is spelled out clearly in there, is it not? That, that that's the potential for well, the non-renewal in that packet? So, so what you're proposing is an additional letter when that situation applies? Correct, when we mail out the renewal packets, that information is included in there, but I feel that we can do a better job in those couple licenses that are coming up that we really put a bullet points for them so that it stands out right on top so when they open it that they see it. Okay, thank you. Anybody else? Is that what you need? Well, with that direction, we would be providing a $450 uh, refund to the brass rail as well as the other ones that council had rejected back in late June. Correct. So that's, I mean, we can certainly uh, do that, but I think uh, Deputy Mayor Mugerauer's point is well taken. You know, we've had zoning requests that people have paid hundreds of dollars for. We reject them and we don't refund it because we go through a big process. We don't, didn't go through as elaborate a process with brass rail because there was no need to do some of the other inspections, but we'll certainly honor that. Uh, but I think Deputy Mayor McGraw's statement is something to food for thought as we proceed in the future. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Thanks, Pam. Thanks for all the legwork. You're welcome. It took me a while to get through that one. That was, that was very thorough. Thank you. Thank you, Lynn. All right, council member announcements and statements, uh, liaison for boards and commissions. Anything to report? All right. Follow up to Convention and Visitors Bureau destination assessment. Council member Ford. Yeah, I'll be quick on this one, but I put it on there um, because we had that great presentation a few meetings back, really focusing on the things we can do to make Oshkosh more attractive to visitors. It strikes me that those same things that make Oshkosh attractive to visitors also improve the quality of life for residents who live here. Um, and I really hope that we're able to drill down what are the most important recommendations from that, from that process, identify any barriers that might exist in code to implementing those. It's just a cursory glance. Some of those recommendations would be code violations. Um, that we make these appropriate changes as a, as a package that really highlights, um, <laughs> has some, some cohesiveness to what we're trying to do to improve the quality of life in Oshkosh. So my really, my question here for my colleagues is whether or not you see value in adding this to our outstanding issue list to have something that long term we pursue, um, we pursue implementing. I would certainly support that. Okay. Yeah, same. <coughs> Does that work for you, City Manager Roloff, adding that to that list? Jotted it down, so yeah, I got it. Awesome, <laughs> thank you. That thing make, makes a lot of sense, and I know Ms. Nightforth has already been following through with uh, m many of the, uh, at least the easy ones. The ones that cost a lot of money, not so easy, but the ones that are regulatory in nature, Kelly's been working very closely with uh, CVB and, and some other folks to, to see what we can do to uh, 
to get those done. So there were some good ideas out there. Yeah. And I guess I'd just like to ask too, and, and maybe you said this, but it's a little muffled uh, echoing back here. So when we do put that on the outstanding issues, could we maybe get a little more specific on what those items are? Because there tends to be a lot of social media, like rumors blowing up about you know, some of those items. And that's great that it's getting the visibility, but um, just it would be helpful, I think, for us to know sure. what is actually being worked on well, one of the from our end. One of the advantages of putting on outstanding issues is, you know, we can give a little blurb in the right. in that, but and we in can the also newsletter, it right? really it really kind of uh, forces us to to have a little oral oral report ready, and happy to do that. You can't hear me down here, Madam Mayor. I'm on the south side. Um, no, the, the reason I wanted to keep it a little a little vague there is that I imagine there's going to I mean there's a heck of a lot in that report. I imagine it's going to take some time to to really identify those those barriers. So that was at least my intent. Okay, thank you very much. All right, so we are at city manager announcements and statements. Well, the first item that I want to. Uh, announce it's not listed here but I think it would I don't think the city attorney will be too mad at me for making the statement um, the uh, the sign next to Ms. Nyforth that says interim community development director the memo didn't get down to our facilities folks uh, Ms. Nyforth is now officially our permanent community development director so I want to congratulate Kelly publicly and please yeah Congratulations. Thank you. So she was giving good direction to her staff here tonight. So they're already following the new boss. So she'll do just fine. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> With respect to the other items uh, in the packet, there's a memo uh, getting ready for the 2022 capital improvements, uh, the geotechnical services explorations. That's usually something we get started uh, this time of the year. Um, I don't, uh, because I was gone last week, I really don't have an ARPA funding update for you. Uh, but there are, uh, I, before I left, I was reviewing some of the applications. And I think one of the advantages of doing it the way we're doing it, I saw some opportunities for collaboration with some of the various applicants. And I'm going to be talking to some of those folks because I, and I think I had said this during some of the sessions that we had, this wasn't an all or nothing type of application. Uh, I saw several organizations say, oh, we'll work with uh, group X and Y. So I want to see if we can maybe start talking even before we do anything, what collaborations can get done. Uh, and I think there's some great opportunities for that. So uh, that's going to be working on uh, over the next few weeks. Um, Mr. Van Gompel has provided you with the second quarter uh, general fund revenue and expense report. Um, we're actually uh, doing about the same as last year, uh, which was a very good year. You'll get more details at Tuesday's, uh, next Tuesday's budget workshop, but we're on track with everything for the year. Uh, biggest thing you can say at this time of year is there's no surprises. So that, that's always a good thing. Um, I can certainly answer any questions you have about uh, the outstanding issues. Um, and I don't have a COVID update for this evening. Uh, happy to answer any questions you might have. Yes, uh, are there any particular items on the outstanding issues that um, we, we have a couple that were dated for this evening. Is there anything specific you wanted to highlight? Sure, the um, probably the one that I, I want to point out is the uh, excuse me, my glasses are fogging up uh, the facility study the um, the ADA assessment. Uh, there was a question I received we're in the process of uh, getting that complete and we'll bring the facility studies back uh, once that ADA report is out there. I think there was a thought that we were going to be doing something with the CIP re relative to that. That was not our intent. By the time the council approves the budget for the CIP budget, the actual budget in November, you'll have a pretty good feel for what some of those facility needs may be. If there's anything else, Madam Mayor, happy to address those as well so then uh, we'll we're continuing to uh, get information on the um, from R.A. Smith on special assessment discussion 
Yes, and uh, you know, we've met with R.A. Smith. I think we're, you know, we're going to be in a position where I think we can show you what an estimated residential cost will be and then how we project it will be for, for businesses and, and um, uh, businesses and multifamily and things like that. Um, that takes a little more work. That does require the council to give us some authorization to um, essentially designate R.A. Smith as a, a designated agent of the city that can look at utility bills right now to to make a, to give an, a true estimate to somebody. We can give a we can give an estimate right now, but to give them an idea of what your bill actually would be, we need to uh, be able to give them the ability to go in and how you can. Uh, slice those bills a little differently it depends on how the utility bill is created because remember the utility bill is right now created for water sewer and storm sewer um, some of those have meters water does sewer and storm water don't either either would transportation that takes some other work that needs to get done so we're uh, we're working on that and we'll probably be uh, ready to present you some information and probably plan a workshop uh, in the very near future and I'm sorry, you said there's nothing for COVID-19 update tonight? I don't have an update other than what I said earlier. The numbers are, are still going up. I know Mr. Guerin is keeping an eye on those. And, uh, and I think that's why we, we put the mask order back in place in city buildings. Mr. Robbie, I see you're still here. Uh, what about those uh, sewer samples? Are those still trending upward like we were seeing two weeks ago? The predictive factors I have not seen an update from my staff in the last week and a half but the last results that they did have did have an upward trend to them all right thank you um, I guess I just uh, share uh, some of the news that came out yesterday that uh, Governor Evers announced an incentive a hundred dollars for those folks watching at home uh, for anyone who received a first dose vaccination from uh, August 20th through September 6th. And uh, I'm sure you can find more information on uh, vaccines.gov. That's all I have, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. Take a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All right, all in favor? Aye. 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 We are adjourned.